evening, Madam Postmaster Paul Postmaster's most welcome guests. It's indeed my pleasure to be here this evening to address you as a representative of the World Dutch Shell. Given the recent issues that surrounded our events, shall we say, in, in uh, Terminal 5 locally, and indeed uh, our departure recently, I guess I could say it's Monday, of uh, one of our major oil rigs, I felt, I felt it was important that we try to clear the air, if you will, explain issues as far as we see it from our perspective, and allow you, the public, the interested public, to formulate your own minds, your own opinions as to whether or not you are for big oil or you are against big oil. Now, of course, many of you here, some of you, some of you here will probably have already formulated decisions and so I've already, no, we don't like you. That's fine, I'm not here to try to convince you otherwise. But I'm hoping the majority of you here will be open-minded, will be willing to listen to what I have to say. Because what I'm going to talk today is about the facts. And at the end of this evening, please ask questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And after that, uh, uh, please form your, formulate your own opinions and own impressions. However, I hope you'll be an informed mind. So let's get going. Now, in July 2014, of course, Seattle is faced with a dilemma. What to do with Terminal 5? Now, to make this thing off right, let's first of all look at what is Terminal 5. Now here, of course, we see Seattle. Um, this is West Seattle there. And in between the piece of land is actually an island, this Harbor Island. And just to the left, or I'd like to say the west, of there is Terminal 5. Okay. A little bit of a blow-up view here, Terminal 5. Now, the most controversial piece of equipment we've had here was the Polar Pioneer. But let's just back up for a second. Now, I said in, in July 2014, the Port of Seattle had, had, had an issue. What to do with Terminal 5? They decided they wanted to increase the capacity of Terminal 5 in order to make more money, ultimately, to, look, to unload and load larger vessels. The problem is, is that they couldn't start this renovation, if you will, until 2017, so that left two and a half years what to do with Terminal 5. We'll enter Foss Maritime and the Royal Dutch Shell. Foss Maritime is a local employer, 1,200 people. That is significant in the economy. 200 vessels. They, along with us, we partnered and approached Port of Seattle and said, we would like to lease part of Terminal 5 in order to do our staging of our vessels. February of this, of, this, of this year, Port of Seattle agreed, signed a lease. And then as early as April of this year, we indeed have had vessels here at Terminal 5. Now, I guess the thing is, I want to back up a little bit, what is staging all about? Why are we really ultimately here? Well, we are ultimately here as Shell to serve you, the public. You, uh, are our market. You demand our products. Terminal 5 is for staging. And what staging is, is, is preparing our vessels, doing maintenance, and preparing for our work up, up north in the Chukchi Sea. Now here is Alaska, and the Chukchi Sea is just to the northeast of Alaska. And that is where this summer we are indeed drilling exploratory wells. We had support to do this by the Obama administration. During May, they gave us, they agreed that we could drill there. And they did that despite the fact that they are indeed the chair of the Arctic Council, which is a group of nations which are concerned about Arctic activities. And what more than, 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 than drilling is something concerned about in the Arctic? Yet they give us the permission. And I must also add that along here there are eight communities, and six of those eight are overwhelmingly in support of what we are doing. That's over 75%. That is very overwhelming majority, I think. Now we don't have any problem with people protesting. And in fact, we are all for people protesting, expressing their points of view. However, when it comes to disrupting our operations, slowing down production, that is indeed a concern for us. And we, we respect protesters and we would hope that they would respect our operations. The, 
Polar Pioneer, left, Terminal 5, Monday. We left with the fleet of kayaks, trailing us, leading us, they were all on our way. Indeed, I think many of you have probably heard that a number of these protesters were actually arrested. We are right now in a legal battle with the city of Seattle because they feel that we're using Terminal 5 illegally, in contravention of the rules that Port of Seattle were granted to use Terminal 5. This would come to a head July 23rd when we actually go to court. Our position, of course, is that we are doing everything legally. We have an agreement. We stand on three pillars. Our people. Our people, they're, 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 they've got families, they've got kids to go to school, they've got mouths to feed, just like everybody else. Our second leg that we stand on is you, our market. And our third leg we stand on is the fact that we safeguard the environment. Certainly we made mistakes in 2012, when we were in Alaska, however, it's been two and a half years since then, and we are ready, we have processes and procedures to in place. And indeed, if there wasn't any environmental impact, it would be these communities here which would be first impacted upon, and yet 75% are in support of us. I'd, like now, I'd now like to open the floor for questions. I handed it some questions. Yes, please. <coughs> I have heard of this group called Shell No. Who are they? They are a, a group, a consortium of environmental protesting groups that they are against oil drilling in the country. Yes? What exactly will the Polar Pioneer uh, be used for in Alaska? Excellent question. Ironically enough, the Polar Pioneer is actually not there to do the drill. And so in fact, all these kayaks were there trying to stop the Polar Pioneer going up there, which is actually there to drill a relief well if the actual well, the, the actual ship that's drilling the rig is a blowout. So in fact, Polar Pioneer is part of our safe is a major part of our safety plan. Yes? So what's going to happen next with all of this? My question just says what will happen. <laughs> so Yes, that's true. Take your pick. <laughs> as far as I can see, there are two things which will happen. Protests will continue, but we will drill. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I thought there was another drill ship coming to Seattle. What happened to it? Yes, in fact it was. Uh, we it, it was in Everett, and because we was such an overwhelming overwhelming welcome with Port Pioneer, we decided to leave her in Everett. <laughs> <laughs> With this ongoing conflict between people who feel uh, um, that they are representing environmental causes and yourselves who uh, make it one of your three pillars to protect the environment, who's going to win in this apparently aligned dispute? I think that at this particular time, we have won. And also, the public. We are allowed to go drill, and the public will indeed get the benefits of the drill. And we will force to the safe way. Yes? Uh, I guess <clears throat> I would be curious to know um, how. Where, where does the money, the sort of the, the profits and the benefits flow when it just basically uh, when it comes to countries? You know, for example, some, some you hear that some of the oil or some of the natural gas that is mined or drilled for here ends up going to, the profits for that end up going other places. So I guess it, it, it would be interesting to know how, where, you know, where the money flows basically is it distributed around the world, or is this an American endeavor? 
I am not qualified to answer the question. However, I will say that uh, our employees are all well paid, and uh, they will they are, are, are indeed benefits of the drilling. Uh, of course, there are our company shareholders which will benefit as well. I cannot answer any more than that. I'll take one last question, please. So, what happens if you lose in court? Is that going to have a uh, is that going to what effect would that have on your operations? The maximum they can find, I think, is around two hundred dollars a day, which is rather inconsequential. However, it's more of a case of of a statement. Whether or not we come back next year, that answer may have some influence impact on that. Just as we mentioned, we have we have vessel on effort. We have vessels all across, all along the coast going through staging processes. Uh, but uh, it's kind of somewhat ironic, in fact, this July 23rd, we actually probably won't have any vessels here. And, and that, that could be a good time, at least perhaps until next year. I think it's time I should wrap up. I thank you very much. I hope that you can now make much more informed decisions. And it was not